A game of a Game of Thrones in a Game of Crusader Kings 3. Where our Game of Thrones takes place, in fact, we are Lord Eddard, the Wise Wolf of House Start. You might notice one or two things different. Somebody linked me to a really cool mod pack containing um, just some graphical changes, the font to make it the Game of Thrones font. And um, some, of the, some of the appearances have been slightly altered, uh, depending on your preference, of course. I thought we'd, we'd give it a go, see how it looks. And, and I think they do look... Not necessarily going to say better, but definitely a bit more akin to the show, for sure. Anyway, uh, we're in a weird place right now. Because uh, everybody seems quite happy and quite content with everything that's happened. Daenerys turned up, and instead of the bloody realm-splintering uh, civil war that I expected, she came in and she was a good ruler, and everybody backed her. And now there is peace in our time, and she's friendly and kind with everybody. Everybody, including our lovely boy, Ned Stark himself, who is friends with Daenerys. So this is a, um, it's a really bizarre situation. Some people said maybe we can interpret, uh, you know, kind of Robert Baratheon is not necessarily hating Daenerys, but, but hating the throne. And now he's been set free. He is just, uh, he, he's our master at arms because he lost all of his holdings. And now he's living his best life. I would like to see him landed, I admit, and see if we can get a branch of the Baratheons up here in the north. Even if we just give him... Uh, I don't necessarily want to get rid of Moat Kalen, but even if we just give him some, like, land, like a hold somewhere nearby, that way he can hunt and he can live his best life. I might do that for him. Now, a lot of people have pointed out that clearly Daenerys likes Jon. She also likes us. She's also proven herself to be an honest, kind, compassionate lady. She's friends with Ned Stark, who is quite famously, uh, I think, a good judge of character. An honorable, honest, just man himself. And again, she gave Jon Snow that land, that land that she took from Mace Tyrell, she gave to him. There was a very convincing argument that, of course, all these things accumulate into maybe revealing Jon's true parentage. Now, this could go one of two ways. We reveal he is secretly the son of Rhaegar Targaryen, Daenerys' older brother. She goes a little crazy, realizing that actually she is the uh, technically not the legitimate claimant to the throne, or... Maybe it actually cements the ties between House Stark and House Targaryen a little bit more solidly. Or more in this case, it would be House Targaryen and House Baratheon. The other problem is Robert Baratheon, if he does hate the Targaryens, even though he doesn't really have such a reason to hate them, right? I suppose she did execute Renly, which is, which is pretty important. And his grandfather was killed by King Melus the Monstrous, uh, who was a Blackfire, obviously a part of... House Targaryen, a cadet branch of House Targaryen. I suppose he does have a few reasons, but the Baratheons also descend from the Targaryen, so, so take it out. Well, his grandmother was a Targaryen, right? Yeah, so it's all swing, swings and roundabouts, really. I, I think Bobby B would take it the worst, because his daughter is married to um, the son of the man who stole the woman that he loved. So it's all a bit of a mess. If I'm not mistaken, that's how it works, right? Um, so it's all a bit of a mess, and this could go really badly. Or... Maybe it'll go fine. Either way, I do think we should reveal it. I think just honest, more importantly, honest Ned Stark would tell his best friend Daenerys, actually, you're not the only Targaryen in Westeros. So let's do it. Okay. Every time I look at Jon, I remember promises made and dangers long dormant. And I also see a child whose whole life is built upon a lie. Promise me, Ned. No, it's not fair to him that she, he should live and die without ever knowing the truth. I love my sister. And I love her child as my own. She would not want to have grown up with him not knowing the truth. Though it pains me and may pain the realm more so, I cannot be the author of this injustice any longer. We can either say, John, the time has come for the truth. I am not your father. Lord John Stark of Mandeside would learn the truth about his heritage. This may have major implications for yourself in the realm. Or, and yet I must, my guilt cannot outweigh the promise I made. I think, all things considered, we send it. Oh, God. Daenerys declared war on Lady Shira. Okay. I see the anguish look across Jon's face as I reach the end of my tale. A long silence passing before he gives me a worded response. This changes nothing, he says decidedly. I shall remain as I always have. I am simply Lord John of Mandeside. I don't want it. I'm taken aback by his certainty and somewhat touched that he would choose to keep me as his parent, and yet the threat remains. On top of the pragmatic question, I cannot help but wonder if this is all a coping mechanism, and he would better be served letting the truth out to the world. Shall we say we must tell the realm? We send letters to every corner of Westeros. Whoa, 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 hold on. Do we say, go to the Night's Watch, and he just 
disappears. I don't like that. I don't think we're going to do that. That doesn't seem the right plan. He has a wife. Uh, he has a domain that he was gifted by the queen. To suddenly decide he's going to the Night's Watch would be bizarre, and she'd certainly probably be interested in why. It's enough that you know. What you do with it is up to you. Oh. We must tell the realm. Is he going to be that honest? I, That's kind of trouble-stirring, I think. You wouldn't tell the entire realm without some sort of expectation else of it. I think we leave it in John's hands. This could possibly be the end of it. We might never hear of anything again, but at least he knows. That's the important part. So you know what? I'm going to leave it up to him. And we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get a follow-up event in 20, 30 minutes where Jon Snow reveals the fact that actually he was a Targaryen all along. Is his wife, his wife is Pergonent. The Stark Baratheon Targaryen child. Oh, what a mess. Good Lord. Okay, and then we will live our life. Why are we leading troops? What are you doing? You just, you just put your armor on for a laugh? We are her master of arms though, right? Um, let's check her council. Sorry, I don't remember because it's, uh, it's been a little while since I played last. Hello there. Um, let's see our actual council, please. We're a master of laws. I don't know why he's put his helmet on and he's got ice out, but that's okay. As long as we're not leading troops, we could actually be a commander. I come across a peasant on the road and try to talk with him. Come to Gorka, a Northman commoner, he snaps before quickly apologizing. I may, meant no offense. I'm a humble farmer, not a great lord like you. No worries. He's doing all right. That's quite nice. Uh, insolent wretch, I was trying to be friendly. Or guards beat this man. No, it's Ned. It's Ned. He, he would just be just be chill about it. Why have you got your armor on? What the hell? We are a commander in our army. I thought we bloody were. Hey, we can refuse to serve. Oh, Pycelle is Hand of the Queen. That's interesting. Okay. It's not that weird, but we'll keep an eye on that. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, we can refuse to be her, her commander, right? Honestly, I think we're all right for the time being. I think this is fine. As long as she doesn't get us killed, she seems to be doing fine. We're fighting on her behalf. It's a just thing to do. Ned would definitely step up in the defense of the realm if he was uh, if he was going to. And he's serving on our council, so it's kind of expected of him, right? You can negotiate us. Wait, Lord Rickard? He hasn't been given a title too, right? I'm not going mad. He's been given the haystacks. Oh my god. Why is she giving him land? She's given Lord Rickard land in the Stormlands. That's so bizarre. I mean, it's kind of cool though, because he wasn't in line to anything either. Okay, so he's got land in the Stormlands, and Jon Snow has got land in the uh, uh, in the, in the Reach. God, this is so bizarre. Okay, fair enough then. Right, Lord Arthur. Sorry, let's just double check these kids are being educated. You are, that's fine. You are, that's fine. And you are not. To be fair, you're two. I'll let you off for the time being, a little baby added. Um, yeah, let's negotiate it. Sure. Air in line to inherit titles. So, uh, Lord Marin is in line to inherit both Jon Snow and his younger brother's uh, stuff. Makes perfect sense, of course. That's fine. How odd. Marvelous news. This is such a bizarre outcome that they've all been landed. The Stark's all over the place. I like it. I think it's a really cool, really cool little twist. Little Arthur. Hello. Pa, cries Arthur, tugging up my sleeve almost as soon as I enter the courtyard. Oh, it's another kid that can't skate. Okay, of course. It's easy. Let me explain it to you. He's also gained confidence balance. I don't think we've really got a lot else to do than serve on Daenerys' council uh, dutifully and make sure the family is good. And to be honest, the family is very good right now. Make sure these kids are, are educated and ready to go. He just got groomed to rule, which is pretty nice. Let's let's educate him personally then. Sure. Yeah. No. He's he's like gonna come out a good diplomat. We're an incredible diplomat. I think that's a that's an acceptable thing to do there. Just make sure that the next generation's coming out fine. Make sure the family's doing well. Other than that, we're, we're like totally fine. There's not really a mass amount to do. Go hunting with our lords. Yeah, like turn up and, and meet them. That lady is enormous. Hello. Oh, she's John Humber's daughter. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, let's go join a hunt. That seems good. We've got to do something here, right? Uh, we're good. I don't think we need to worry about hiring any people to get to... <laughs> get to the province to the south. It's one of our direct vassals, too, so that makes sense. My steward, Lord Jory, is hosting a hunt in Wolf's Branch. It's time for us to depart. I should be able to proudly represent the House of Stark. Hunting with birds is one of the most noble pursuits, one I'm sure I will excel at. You do have the hunter trait. <gasps> Roderick! Roderick Castle died. Oh, Roderick Flint. Okay, that's fine, then. I don't care about you. Magnus Steer now speaks common. Bizarre, okay. The Thens are moving away. Not that we really care about that too much. We knew that traveling through the Colbrand steps wouldn't be easy. We march until night without a stop, arriving at our next destination so late that 
we don't even dine. Our horse is near, refusing to leave the water wherever we find a stream. A local merchant comes to us soon after hearing our complaints, pointing out a wooden barn behind her filled with local horses. I have the best mounts you'll ever see. Um, give me your best stallions. 45 gold so that we can get to a hunt that's five minutes away slightly faster. No. No, no more exp no more expenses. Uh, we successfully pushed the horses. Gains pushed horses. Oh, your horse needs to stop constantly, but we pushed them? Pushed them a little bit too hard, I suppose, the implication. Our road takes us through the treacherous parts of Colbrand. We're going for five minutes. What are you talking about? Well, this can for any dangers ahead of rustling branch grabs my attention. It's Mathel. You scared me, Mathel. Anyway, let me see what kind of, uh, kind of fruit you have. Yes, it looks and smells delicious. I wonder what it tastes like. Um... Mathel, what if it's poisonous? Let him eat it. I don't think Ned Stark would care that much. It's a harmless plant. There you go. It's just an apple or something. Hey, we actually finally arrived at one. That's good. Soon. Right, let's see. Uh, so, I'm trying to change my intent here. Recreation murder or befriend. I, I think this is Ned Stark. Let's try and befriend. Oh, everybody's here. This is nice. Uh, Roos Bolton? Or maybe Lord John Umber? I feel like Lord... John Umber is probably a bit of a a bit of a more appropriate target. 46% chance of success. Yeah, let's go for it. What a lovely hunt. This is good. I'm so glad everybody turned up. I almost turned it down because it was like a minor vassal, but Lord Roos shared his knowledge with you. Oh. Silent increases the hunter trait experience. Lord Jorah, hello. This is Jorah Mormont Jr. He's come to give us gifts. Thank you. It's about the only way I can pay for anything. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Lord Roos is sharing more knowledge with us. Oh, Lord Donald, you bonded over hunting. This is great. I'm so glad I turned up to this. Lord Roos is sharing his knowledge with just about everybody. Of course, he would know how to hunt things. I watch excitedly as my falcon identifies the target and takes his wing from its watch, soaring high into the air. The hairs above are none the wiser as my falcon scans the ground from high above. Time and again, my falcon swoops him for the kill, but misses, retreats, and only grazes its target. After hours of attempts, the game's warbler disappeared. The falcon is near exhausted, and the light is fading. A shame. Very close, though. Question is, are we going to succeed with our befriending? Uh... Ooh. No, we're not. That's unfortunate. Healing the Call of the Wild is an adventure, and an outing delivered the good, bad, and abundance. I'm no close to getting the confidence of John. I must be doing something wrong. You're fine. I gather the Disappointments Party and Exhausted Hounds for the trip home. Now, I haven't looked behind the scenes in any of the kind of recent CK3 DLCs. I would assume that, um that the success of the event is is directly proportional to your chance to befriend them interesting maybe this is what eddard does with his final years oh we're already home before i've even read the bloody <laughs> before i've even read over the final thing hello um Porther, a man from my court is in tywin's prison okay uh yes of course we'll release him in ned stark we're, we're just men we're not gonna allow someone to be unjustly imprisoned well, justly in prison, but we're not going to leave him there to rot, of course. Here you go, Rog, you can be Castellan. Actually, I'd rather put... So, it, does their primary stat determine what they can do for us? So, for example, if I swap it over to... Oh, it's going to piss him off. But I, I want to test this just to find out. No, it is just... Uh, fortified defenses. What if we stop? Oh, here we are. This is better. I'm going to get you to um, oversee the realm then. I wonder if they get options based on... Their skill set. I wonder if it's if they have over a ten in a skill. I'll look at. I'll, I'll look that up at some point. Negotiate with the vassals. We get twenty three <coughs> oh, extra tax. Or we oversee the realm, giving stewardship and lifestyles to. Honestly, let's try and get some money going here. That's a good amount. Law. Uh, Robert Rathian is going around. You know, just kind of keeping sure that there's there's order in the realm. That's pretty good. Everything's everything's fine. Seven point two a month. I'm happy with that. That's a good turnaround for cash to say that we weren't doing too good before. I think we'll have a bunch of hunters, Eddard, then. Why not? If it's a noble pursuit, I mean, he's a man very much committed to the old gods. He's not zealous or anything like that, but he does. Oh, obviously, in the books in the show, he, he seems quite reverent of that type of thing. Maybe we'll just stick to the, to the hunting. That seems good. Speaking of which, we have an invitation. Tywin Lannister is inviting us to our hunt. Oh... In Lowell Hall. Where is Lowell Hall? Right next to... Uh, just up the coast from Castamere. Oh, sorry, not Castamere. Ooh, Casterly Rock. Castamere is actually up around here somewhere, right? Yeah, it's right there. Um, sure. I have to leave within 24 days. Let's leave now. Let's try and get there this time. Oh, Jesus. It's so dangerous. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. What's the real danger one? Dar water. So let's get rid of that one. Let's let's get a uh, mountaineer. 
And let's also get... I, I think we're going to need a Forder or something to get through the wetlands, right? On the neck. Wetlands, major road. A Forder is good at that, I would assume. Yeah, it's just common sense, really. Uh, Caravan Master, you're, you're the best we've got, right? Uh, aptitude good. Aptitude average. Oh, we've got an excellent person here. Sorry, madam, you are fired. 124, 18 safety. So if we swap you out, 124, 13 safety. Oh, well, I should have stuck with what I had then. That's fine. Okay, let's head out then. Winterfell to Lowell. Yep, that's fine. And boom. We've recruited a lovely man named Gorn. And Harmer of Tusken. Yes, welcome. Okay. This time I'd love to actually get to it. We missed the one in Skagos. Don't really care. It's just on Skagos. They're basically just wildlings there anyway. Oh, Robert Brathian's joining us. Oh, God, Robert Brathian's joining us. You mean the man that, that disfigured Tywin? Are they still rivals? They are. Ah, oh, shit. Maybe I shouldn't have brought Robert with me. He is actually on the journey with us, isn't he? Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, this could end uh, uh, in a nightmare. Our journey is violently interrupted by the sound of tearing flesh and gnashing jaws, the desperate cries of a man about to meet his end. The noise is so horrific, it must have come from the depths of hell. Attempting to track the source down, we find a desperate captain struggling with a wild wolf. His blade is wedged between the beast's jaws, but the grip is beginning to falter. Help him, Robert. Robert Baratheon might become severely injured, and this guy might die 28% chance. Or if we step in... Oh my god, we're going to rescue Osric the Craven. I don't know if you could call a man Craven for fighting a wolf. That's pretty fucking brave. I wouldn't fight a wolf. Um, I'm going to send Robert Baratheon in. Is it a bit of a portent that Robert Baratheon's about to go on Warhammer and crush the, the, the crush the, the symbol of House Stark? Maybe. I know it's a dire wolf, but it's uh, same thing. Wolf's a wolf, huh? The, <laughs> the inn we stayed in at Windmend Field last night was horrible, to say the least. Something about the quality of its bedding and atmosphere did not sit well with many of us, myself included, when we tried to sleep last night. Uh, as we ride towards today, everyone is visibly tired and exhausted. We'll just have to bear with it, or we go find another inn. No, I'm not missing this. We've missed too many hunts. We visited the ruined gateway of the north. Oh, I should have looked for some alternate routes. That's my bad. It's not the first time I catch my best friend Robert fiddling around with some flowers he's picking along the road. Oh, this is so... I uh, this is the best story plot ever. It's just Ned and and Robert Baratheon in retirement. You remember that when you remember that time you were king? Oh, and telling war stories along the road and having a laugh together. And now all they do is they hunt and they eat, and they live their best life. It's the life that Robert Baratheon always wanted but could never have. This is so lovely. And now he's going to try and win over this lady. My liege, she says, it's no secret that my heart has found a new home far away from here. My soul aches for Gwyn. My desires know no end. Her eyes are hair. I long for a, just a salute. I die for a word. Please, I beg you, let me stay with her. Robert Baratheon is going to stay behind for love. You're married, though. To Alassane Mormon. Oh, but she they're like uh, they're like estranged. She's gone back up. She's gone all the way to the West Shelf. Which, to be fair, is uh potentially canonical. Because in the books, it's possible that, that Tormund is uh her kid's father. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh you no, you're coming with me. Oh uh, her eyes are certainly beautiful. Her hair looks so soft. We could try and win over Gwyn Blackpeat. Can we not bring her with us? We have enough room to welcome both of you. Lord Galen's going to be annoyed, but I'm not leaving Bobby B behind. Yeah, lad, join us on the road. Oh, this is so nice. You've been appointed Warden of the North. I, I assumed we were anyway. Wrongly, clearly. Probably where the realm splintered, but that's okay. Did we visit the Tullys on the way back? Oh my god, did we just miss... Oh no, River Run. We are going through River Run. Thank god for that. I was going to say, that's got to have some experience, right? As we manage to get through a dangerous path in Ravel Keep, we decide to rest for the night. As I walk around the encampment, a strange feeling uh, as if someone missing bothers me. I ask around and everyone agrees on one thing. They don't remember seeing Alan all day. Uh, maybe he was just lost somewhere in the farmlands. Should we find, start a, a party for him? Not celebrating him being missing like a search party. Sorry. Pr I probably didn't need to clarify. Find him myself? Oh, God. Wander around the farmlands aimlessly and gain double ill. Wow, that's a lot of ill. I don't want to risk people getting lost. Uh, <sighs> yeah, no. Uh, this uh, Pragmatic Ned Stark. Oh, but he's also an honorable man. An honorable fool. Fine. No, I can't spend 50 gold. Oh, Jesus. We'll just go and find him. We'll just go find him. Delayed by 14 days. Rejoins the entourage. Yeah, but he grows, grows close to forming a rivalry with us. No, no, no. I'm sorry. 
we uh, Ned Stark is not such an honorable man that he would spend like nine months worth of taxes on a search party to find a man who's probably fine. Hey, we visited the twins. Nice work. Four travel experience. Oh, this is so cool. I like being a Lord Paramount. This is good because now we can actually go and visit all the other Lord Paramounts and do their, do their hunts and their social occasions. The high altitude and brisk air of Darrow's has a refreshing quality as we traverse the local hill fort. I oogle the soldiers training below with a keen eye. The tactics are not completely foreign to me as I'm trained in martial matters. While doing so, I approach the local captain, Andron. Would you like to join in, my lord? I'm always up for the challenge. 100 gold to get some training. No, we can't really afford that. My best friend would benefit. Oh, we can put Robert Baratheon to training. Oh, shake some of the dust off. God damn, he's still got 58 prowess, though. He's got to be one of the strongest fighters in the realm. I might actually pop up in the character finder. I presume, if he's still alive, maybe Gregor Clegane. Maybe Barristan Selmy. Maybe Jamie as well. We'll have a look. Um, Sorry, we're in a hurry. Let's have a quick look. What it was, we got the advanced character finder. Um, I remember we have to turn that off, otherwise it's quite slow. Um, let's just search by all, and then we do that, and then we refresh. Uh, Robert Brathian. Whoa! He is the strongest. 61. Look at that. He just picked something else up. Apparently. Balon Greyjoy, the Reaver. 56. Wow, I'm kind of surprised by that, but he's got, uh, he's got all sorts of prize armor, ironborn battle axe, cultural bonuses, bellicose warriors by merit salt, like that type of thing. Elena Yunsi, whoever she is, just some random lady who's a fucking machine. That's cool. Whoa. Merin, Tr Merin Trance up there. Higher than higher than Lord Greyjoy. Really? Higher than a giant? <laughs> okay. There's Gregor Clegane. I suppose he's he's up there, but like not so high because he's not like a it's not like a proper, uh, like like a like a trained knight, so to speak. He doesn't he doesn't excel in matters of martial. He's just a bit more of a enormous fucking dude. Damn, that's cool though. I like that. There's Barristan Selmy, quite lower than I expected. Oh Lord, Jesus man! <laughs> Why was he naked? Well, let's move on. I have seen the world and beheld its many wonders in my travels, but never have I beheld such beauties as the ones I've seen in Crags Bay. Truly, Westerman women are a cut above the rest. Yep, that's a fascinating specimen right there, all right. His words, not mine. A pretty little sunshine. She's far too pleasing for my eyes to spend days away slaving in Crags Bay. He would never. I cannot give my love so freely. Ned Stark would never do that. And there he is, Tywin Lannister, the creepy old bastard. He's only 64, to be fair. As we await the arrival of the rest of the guests, Lord Tarman has started the preparations. His gamekeepers check on the Highlands each day for signs of quarry while building a camp closer to the hunting grounds. I've checked my gear and horse many times. It won't be long now. This is all going to kick off, isn't it? He's going to see Robert Baratheon. Oh, my God. What if he changes his intent to, like, murder? Look at this lineup. Titos. Titus Blackwood, Lord Quentin. Lord Roland of Craighall, us. And then, like, by us, I mean Tywin as well. Who else have we got here? Anybody of notes? Not massively. No, not massively. Robert Baratheon did come with us, but he's kind of part... He's part of our party rather than part of the hunt. He wasn't invited to actually join in the hunt. I guess he's just hanging around Lannisport or something like that. Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. We want to be the one to, uh, what do you think, do the fight? Yeah, let's see if he actually has any, any passion for hunting. I'm kind of pushing him into that, uh, pushing him into that role. I mean, to be fair, he did develop the hunter trait naturally, but let's see what happens. 80% success chance, that's what we like to see. Lord John assembles the party to summarize over the camp in the hills near Lowell. The local gamekeepers have scoured the vicinity for recent tracks and fumes. There is clearly a small roe buck nearby, but no traces of larger game. Lord Tommen decided he wanted to hunt the row. He didn't really have a choice. Let's get out there. Karen. Why is it still saying it's about our niece? This is our granddaughter. This is our so direct son's uh, and heir's daughter. Arena. Um, Arena is already like, 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 uh, 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 Eleanor. We could, we could adjust. What about, oh, somebody gave me such a good name suggestion, but I can't for the freaking, like, ah, Carol like christmas carol 
That's so good. Spell it with a K, and we've absolutely nailed it. That was a fantastic suggestion. Thank you. I think it was someone on Patreon sent me that. Lord Dennis and Lord John bonded over hunting. Well done, Dennis and John. My party and I stalked through a copse. Eyes peeled for any sign of a row. From canopy above, a uh, soft twittering spills forth, growing louder as we advance. It's a nestling screeching for its mother. An agile huntsman brings down a fluffy ius, an unfledged raptor chick from the ebony. What luck. Only young birds caught in the wild can be properly trained to hunt. Ah... Should we take ourselves a hunting raptor? Clever girl. Proves falconry hunt success. Oh, shit. Here, Tywin a gift. No, fuck you. <laughs> Would we give Tywin it? Does he like Tywin? No. No, he really does not like Tywin. We'll take it. Maybe this is a sign. I said we'll see if he's got natural aptitude for hunting. And he's just found a raptor. Amazing. This is good. Lord Tywin's huntsmen say they know a place for the beast cover and nearby watering holes and grazings of the row frequents. Well, I was thinking for a moment before scoffing. I came for real hunt. We will hunt by force, force, not by stealth. He's going to attempt to corner the row with a spear. Go on then. Did we just die? Stories about how ghosts frequently pass through a village in Branswood. Okay. They don't do anything to anyone per se, but they do appear at night every now and eerily but peacefully march through the settlement. So if they were a caravan, a military procession of sort. Interestingly, these incidents have been confirmed by more reputable members of the community. The locals are unsure on how to react to it, and different people have different perspectives on the matter. Some are terrified and believe it to be s to, to send in elders to exorcise the spirits. Others view this as a different perspective, believing the ghosts are benevolent. It's a blessing. How odd. Literal ghost towns. For as long as any county in your domain has literal ghost towns, you can do the ghost town investigation activity. What? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. What the hell? The exhausted, panicked animal has turned to bay, struggling to stand and barking in panic. Lord Hyman hefts his spear and cautiously moves to the exhausted animal, chooses a moment carefully, plunging his blade deep into its heart. A fine kill. Well done. We've done it. We have slain the beast. It was just a deer. We didn't even get to see the after. It just, I didn't close that. It just disappeared. And there we are. 15 track experience in Venator. We visited the Mines of the Tooth. Very good. And we're on the way back. I presume we're just going to hit River Run. Oh, God. Somebody wants to duel us. I mean, I'm no interest in you or a fair fight. Is something Ned Stark would never say. He's only got 17 Marshall. It might be less valuable after I win. 99% that we defeat him or Robert Brathian fights him. I'm, you know what? Robert, he loves a fight. He wins the fight. Of course he does. I expected nothing else. Truly, a stroll through the rutting meadow is a gift from the old gods. Ooh, woo. The tranquility of this place is suddenly and abruptly broken by fury. Oh, Jesus. Furious grunts and the clattering of armor. Hark, get me out of this metal prison. My squire took offense at my manner, even going to the far to call me heartless and has abandoned me. Whatever this strange man did could not have been enough to justify being stuck forever in his armor. I could, of course, have someone help him, but is it truly worth it? Consider the armor gone for a price. Offer him loyal squires for his fealty. It's a, it's a hedge knight, right? Well, no, he's an actual real knight. D Sir Dunstan the Heartless Pike Glen. He's not actually that good at all. Um, sir, we can help you, but we're, we're going to take a... I don't want him, though. But would Ned Stark take money off of a man in need? No, he wouldn't. Okay, play the character. Boo. Uh, wild animals came to our camp last night when we were in Whispering Wood. No one was hurt, but they did ransack some of our food supplies. <sighs> Buy supplies from the locals. No, accept our losses. Move on. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. This man is four in, in, in massive civil wars. He knows how to ration. Lynette is in charge of our food supplies, and Shipple surely revealed our provisions are all but useless, having been improperly stored. Patches of mold. Cover the bread in fresh produce. You idiot. Eat the mold. Eat the mold. Eat the... Oh, God. 2% chance we die if we eat. No, nature. Nature will provide for us. Like I said, he's a seasoned veteran. 94% chance of finding something to eat. Jesus, what's happening here? Everything, apparently. A grotto emerges from the vegetation, likely a stone arch in a cathedral. On its entry, there's a small wooden table and a stall. Someone has left a lantern burning. Careful, my liege. Lynette holds her arm up in front of my chest. There are bandits in these lands. You're quick to make accusations. A dimly illuminated figure stands in the entrance to the cave. I'm merely a hermit. And, well, you carry the title of lord. Hermit would be a great addition to my entourage. Um, he's just a mystic, a wise man. Tell me about my future. Hmm, let's just go. Yeah, leave this hermit to his life. How about that? 
Hosta Tully died. Oh, okay. So it's now Edward's brother-in-law, Edmir Tully, that is in charge. Very nice. He married. Uh, he is married. Leonette Vorley. Amazing. Uh, a pleasant stroll through the wood wooden seed forest makes us appreciate the landscape around us. A vibrant smell, perhaps a campfire. I turn to my entourage and observe Caravan Master Lynette's livid face. Fire! She screams, pointing at the not-so-distant flames where Raymond has been trapped. Um, Robert may save him. Robert may save him. Zero percent chance of Raymond dying from that one, though. Robert managed to rescue Raymond with great difficulty. Oh, Robert saved this man. Robert Rathian. Oh, you managed to rescue him. Well done. Robert gains a trait wounded, but he's a goddamn hero. Jesus, this is not ending. Journeying through Tatterton, I pass by a peculiar looking tent splayed open. Come in, almighty lord. I can tell you have many miles to go, and I offer you a reading for your future travels for a modest price. Did face the faith of the seven? Nah, we're not interested. Sorry. If she was old gods, I would absolutely take it. During my travels, I come across a friendly village in Sluness. The locals were respectful and kindly gave us supplies. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I guess because we made it back to the north then, huh? Diplomatic perk. Right, so we'll deal with that in a second. Bound by blood. Personal scheme success chance against family members. We should be probably trying to befriend some family members, huh? Shit, so those accursed children. My son Darren is compatriot Mark. Following my incredible naming scheme, we caught red-handed having stuck into the armory. Mark hurt himself, but fortunately Darren ran outside and grabbed the nearest adult, missing everything they'd done. It's good that you omitted what you did, Darren. Yeah. Ned's a man that would respect, honestly. And I appreciate it. The kid was an honorable quarrel. I'm not sure if you saw that before it disappeared. The smell of decay hits my nostrils like a pungent punch. The livestock don't look as well as I'd imagined around Wintertown. Peasants work here, drag their feet, and aimlessly wander around trying to look busy. The clear lack of motivation and morale is rubbing off on the entire populace. Uh, a shudder and disbelief as the local leader, Ashlyn, approaches me. What a mismanaged hole. Her name's Ashlyn. You can't call her that. A blind pig could run this place better, Ashlyn. Or I have better things to do. You do not have better things to do. You are the liege lord visiting Wintertown. This is right outside of Winterfell. Yes. Sort it out. 80% chance to you. There. Good. She's improved the pastures for 15 years. That is beautiful news. Well done, Eddard. That is good rulership. He's an honest man. So I may consider that rude. But my god, did it not work. At long last, I return home. There's nothing better than a returning in Winterfell after a long journey. I look forward to resting for some time, but the cold road beckons ever onward. The net reports we traveled for 183 days. Bloody hell. Marin Stark gained a lot of experience for running around while we were gone. That's, that's actually fantastic. You know, it's really great that this kid's going to take over and already understand ruling for, for you know, just over half a year in Ned's stead is, is pretty good. What? My spy master has come to me with grave news. Jamie, son and heir of Lord Tywin of the Westerlands, is plotting against Robert Baratheon. Oh, God, there was a plot, and we have uncovered it far too late. What can we do? Can we... I can't let him kill Robert Baratheon. Oh, God. This lady is a deviant. Who is she? Mordan. My scepter is a deviant. How appropriate. Um, oh, Bobby, your secrets. John has different parents. And now I guess John knows that one too then, huh? That, that's probably been added to his secrets list is what I meant. Obviously, he knows because we told him. Um, is there anything I can do? Surely we... Uh, uh, discovered secret schemes? No schemes have been discovered? What about the one where they're trying to murder Bobby B? Maybe they abandoned the plot? I think... Ned's a loyal man. Ned has a strong hook on Robert Rathian for loyalty and vice versa, or at least he did when he was our liege. I think we we have to investigate these rumors and find out if someone's trying to kill the previous king, Robert Baratheon. He's a very important man in the realm, even if he isn't king right now. Uh, Lady Barbary, I trust you will go and find some secrets in Tywin's court. See if this is true. Find if there is any 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 truth to this matter. Oh, God. Oh, I don't want him to die. This was such a... This is like best friends going on an adventures time. They're, they're basically retired. Marin's taken over the, the... You know, some of the day-to-day -day life of the realm. It was all going so well. Let's hold some court then. I know I unticked that. It's fine. Uh, just for the first in line to approach. My vassal, Lord Rorge, runs his hand through his hair before stepping forward. My liege, I seek your aid in combating the issue of lack of sheriffs in Blackpool. <laughs> Someone's got to protect the Illuminations. He pauses to a sigh. I cannot fix the problem with the resources I have. Um, my steward will offer you advice, because we can't really afford it. I mean, we can afford it right now. Um, Lord John. John Umber, I presume, judging by the bloody size of him. It is indeed. 
He's dragging a chained wolf. My lord, I present you a gift worthy of the mightiest ruler in the world. A magnificent beast was hunted in the forest, and now I offer it to you as my devotion. Ah. We gain a pet wolf. Oh, this is so good. Thank you. A peasant steps forward, carrying a petition. My liege, I come to you as a representative of the Wolfswood clansmen in the uh, pro province of Motcon. Our plea to see an important monument of culture was ignored by the lady. Um, give you a formal request for the... For the Shit. Makes a mockery of Northman culture. No. No, I'm sorry. We can't be building what could potentially be wildling statues, especially not for that price. Do you know how long we've been saving up this money? We can have a hunt of our own very soon. We've got a goddamn wolf and a raptor. Like I said, things are just going too well. Too nicely. Everything is too fine. This is the buddy cop adventures of Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon going around hunting. Uh, Robert Bar Baratheon's getting women and fighting and Ned Stark's doing diplomacy and, and living his life. This is just like the perfect ending. This is the nicest ending that both of those characters could have ever had. And I hate it. I wanted drama and grim and darkness. I'm trying not to say grim dark because I hate that expression. This is not... This is not how it was supposed to go. Just a lovely, peaceful Iron Throne. In my thousands of hours playing Crusader Kings, I've never seen such a nice realm. <laughs> What's happening here? She's got a peace with the rest of that lady. She's not at war with anybody. She hasn't declared any wars. She's still not married for whatever reason. She's refusing to marry? Social figure. She's making friends with all of... Uh, uh, with the other lords. Apparently good social connections. Logistician, she's an eager reveler. She's throwing feasts and having a great time. This is nonsense. We need some drama, damn it. And there's no way to do that. Marin. Maybe you could do some drama. Just trusting, fickle, gregarious. Grey eminence. Okay. Valley diplomatic court here. He's just also a nice guy. If anything, this 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 kid could throw a lot of feasts, and maybe some some troubles can come out of that. Who knows? I'd love to see an intrigue character in the next couple of generations, because that, in my opinion, is when Crusader Kings is absolutely at its best. As we saw, I think, with the last series especially. So anyway, thank you for joining me today. What can I say? I'm sorry there is no drama or anything mad going on. They're just having a fucking great time every day, and they are loving every moment of it. And that's that's all I can do. Someone's trying to kill Robert Baratheon. Oh yeah, I could have probably predicted that. Jamie Lannister wants Robert dead. Yeah, shocker. It's too nice. It's just too damn nice. And finally, I suppose, a big thank you to the patrons. A bit well, a word of warning quickly before everyone else turns off. Uh, there possibly will be no episode tomorrow because I am at a medical appointment uh, to see about some things. Uh, not really massive, but it, w it will delay me because I have to take British public transport. So the chance of there being videos solely depends on that, which is probably safe to say won't be much content tomorrow. Thank you to A Red Demon, Cast the Pathfinder, Ghosty, Time Waster, Dame Stitchell, I'm Not Sorry, Chinamancer, Shinji An, The Legend Boss, Zarko Yanev, Josh Luntz, Genuine Guy, Iron Ball, Zero's Legion, Shadow Shall I, Lions, Anthony Fackenthal, Talk nerdy to me. Grand K, Lord Snarky, Aromatic Fool, Goatman Gaz, Natalie Mulder, 2.0, Andrew Robichaud, Minty Mushrooms, and Frogs in Pants for their support over at the Executive Producer Tears over on Patreon. Thank you for joining me. Apologies about the delay on this episode again. I'm, I'm way behind schedule. It was a busy day today, and then I'm like busy again tomorrow. It's just, I don't know what's happening. Why is everything happening this close to Christmas? I'm not sure. Thank you as well to Jason R, Nikki in Wonderland, Crowd Slayer 07. Delizo, Reeftopia, Ashen Soul, Liam Smith, Thalen, Elliot Sandage, Plexiglass, Witcher Gerald, Bubonic, Ghoul, Lady Alex, Gendalf Spanish, Andrew McKinnon, and Mantle. See you all tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully. Can't make any promises.